My brothers in Christ, there is a losing mentality and there is a winning mentality. These are real things. To, and, and, and being a born-again Christian does not automatically give a man a winning mentality. It doesn't happen automatically. To have a winner mentality, you have to work specifically to develop this mindset, this attitude of winning. And that's what it is. It's, an, it's a mindset and it's an attitude. What is a winning mentality? When you win long enough, you figure out what it takes to win and you come to expect winning. Oddly enough, the same thing applies to a losing mentality. When you lose long enough, you never figure out what it takes to win, and then you come to expect losing. And eventually, you actually come to prefer losing because it automatically requires less effort and it automatically brings a person more sympathy in life. Brian Tracy said, life is like a combination lock. Your job is to find the right numbers in the right order so you can have anything you want. Vince Lombardi said, confidence is contagious. So is a lack of confidence. Too many of God's people have a losing mentality and failure is a highly contagious disease. In fact, in my lifetime, I would say that a losing mentality is much more contagious than this virus everybody's been afraid of for two years. Let me say that again. Too many of God's people have a losing mentality and failure is a highly contagious disease. This is why so many churches and even some very large churches have a losing mentality culture. I don't know if you realize it or not, but churches have a culture. And the culture that we have purposely fomented here at Faith Christian Center over these years is a culture of winning and not a culture of losing. Thomas Edison said, if we did all the things we are capable of, capable of doing, we would literally astound ourselves. Now, I'm going to tell a story tonight I've never told, I don't think, ever in public, and that is from my sophomore year of high school. A friend of mine talked me into joining the cross-country team. And so in the very first race, I made it about halfway through the race, and I just quit. I mean, I just stopped. I just stopped in my tracks. And the coach told, coach told me later, he said, Gene, you ran the first half of that race trying to keep up with the best runners, the varsity runners. And the best runners at Anderson are all state varsity runners. And so he told me, you ran until your body hit the wall, your body just gave out, and you had no choice but to stop. And he said, next time, and from now on, run at your own pace. He said, I guarantee you, you'll finish every race and you'll clock a respectable time. That day I decided, that day I decided that I would never quit anything again for the rest of my life, and I haven't. Vince Lombardi said, it's not whether you get knocked down, it's whether you get back up. I never tried to run again at the pace of those all-state varsity guys. I ran at my own pace. And then I learned to run at my own pace and then to push myself a little bit from my pace. Push myself from my pace. By the time the next spring rolled around, I was chosen to run in the 880 relay. I ran other events, but I was proud to have been chosen to run in the 880 relay. It's now called the 800 meter race. The athletic director at Anderson Senior High School was fond of saying winners never quit and quitters never win. It was only, only later in life that I learned that this was actually a Vince Lombardi quote, but it marked me. A Vince Lombardi quote marked me. Winners never quit and quitters never win. It was Vince Lombardi who said that. Winners never quit and quitters never win. And gentlemen, this evening is a daddy speech. I could have called it the things men don't learn from their fathers anymore. Jim Rohn once said, you must take personal responsibility. Uh, oh my gosh, 
You know, that is a constant theme at Faith Christian Center. You must take personal responsibility. You cannot, Jim Rohn said, you cannot change the circumstances, the seasons, or the wind. But you can change yourself. You see, a church's job is to teach you the Word of God, and you need to know the Word of God so that you can learn how to live. And you need to learn how to live so that you can learn how to win. And that's why at Faith Christian Center, we work to develop a culture of winning and not a culture of losing. If you're taking notes, number one tonight, you cannot win until you want to win. Now, that seems very fundamental, but it is basic, and it is uh, a critical cornerstone of the message tonight. You cannot win until you want to win. There's got to be something inside of you that wants to pull ahead. Since I'm talking about the winning mentality, today is Vince Lombardi Day at Faith Christian Center. This message is going to be peppered with Vince Lombardi quotes. Vince Lombardi was an NFL co uh, football coach, and Lombar Lombardi is considered by many to be the greatest coach in the history of football, and he is recognized as one of the greatest coaches and leaders in the history of all American sports. He is best known as the head coach of the Green Bay Packers during the 1960s. Uh, we have one Green Bay fan here. <laughs> There's probably more than Cowboy fans here. He's best known as the head coach of the Green Bay Packers during the 1960s, and he led the team to three straight and five total NFL championships in seven years, in addition to winning the first two Super Bowls at the conclusion of the 1966 and 1967 NFL seasons. Vince Lombardi never had a losing season as a head coach in the NFL, compiling a regular season winning percentage of 73% and 90% in postseason play for an overall record of 105 wins, 35 losses, and six ties in the NFL. And Vince Lombardi said, winning isn't everything, but wanting to win is. Winning isn't everything, but wanting to win is. So first of all, you have to want to win. We don't normally think of it in these terms, but the Apostle Paul was a winner. The Apostle Paul had a winning mentality. I always found it interesting that the New Testament constantly refers to the Christian walk in terms of sporting events. And almost every such reference is from the Apostle Paul. For example, Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And then Galatians 2.2, 2, I went in response to a revelation and set before them the gospel that I preach among the Gentiles, but I did this privately to those who seemed to be leaders for fear that I was running or had run my race in vain. And Philippians 2, verses 14 to 16, do everything without arguing or complaining so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. So for the New Testament, to use all these references to sporting events as illustrative of the Christian lifestyle tells me that like sports, true Christianity requires effort. If you want the best out of life, you're going to have to put your best effort into life. And if you want the best results from your faith in God, you're going to have to dare to give God your very best effort as you follow him and his word. Jim Rohn once said, you can't hire someone else to do your push-ups for you. There are some things in life you just have to do yourself. 
Paul also wrote in 2 Timothy 1.7, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but of power and of love and of self-discipline. Isn't that the most popular word in the culture in 2022, right? Self-discipline. And in 2 Timothy 4, verses 6 to 8, Paul wrote, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to those who have longed for his appearing. And it was most likely the Apostle Paul who wrote in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so, so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance. The race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now, Paul's goals were different than yours or mine. Paul knew that he was going to die in Nero's Rome. Paul knew that he had to pay the price for killing Stephen and all the others that he had persecuted and put to death. Paul knew that his coming death was just and right. But more than anything else, he wanted to win for Jesus in the time he had left, and he wanted to put points on the board for all of eternity in the time he had left. Paul was a winner, and Paul had the winning mentality. Nobody was driving him or pushing him. Paul drove himself. There is a losing mentality and there is a winner mentality. And being a born again Christian does not automatically give a man a winning mentality. A winning mentality is something that comes from human fathers, not something that comes from the Holy Spirit when you're born again. Now you may be like me, my natural human father never imparted to me a winner mentality. I got my winning mentality from my faith fathers, not my natural human father. Vince Lombardi said, winning isn't everything, but wanting to win is. I've already given you that, but that's key right here. You got to have the want to, because like with the Apostle Paul, nobody was monitoring him, nobody was micromanaging him, nobody was pushing him. He had something inside himself that drove him forward and onward. So my brothers in Christ, you cannot win until you want to win. Paul wrote in 1 Timothy 4.8, for physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Number two, if you're taking notes, you cannot win without a work ethic. Number two, you cannot win without a work ethic. In 2022, the world is filled with lazy people. Even the church world is filled with lazy people. Why do you think we rarely hire anyone at Faith Christian Center? Because most people are lazy people. You cannot win in this life with a lazy mentality. And what Vince Lombardi said about hard work and enthusiasm is also true here in the management ranks of Faith Christian Center. Vince Lombardi said, if you are not fired with enthusiasm, then you will be fired with enthusiasm. Here are two more quotes by the great Vince Lombardi. The only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. And the harder you work, the harder it is to surrender. And let me throw in a famous quote by Thomas Jefferson. I'm a great believer in luck, and I find that the harder I work, the more I have of it. No one can make you want to work. No one can make you want to pull ahead. There is something you should, this is something you should have learned from your natural human mother and father. And if you didn't learn this from your natural human mother and father, only you can fix this deficit in you. Even if you have the greatest wife in the world, even she cannot fix this deficit in you. And the Holy Spirit is not going to. That's not his function. 
Jack Canfield, a protege of W. Clement Stone, wrote, if you want to be successful, you have to take 100% responsibility for everything you experience in your life. You know, just, I think it was this morning, I saw a picture of a beach photo from the 70s, and uh, the person who posted that photo said, look, nobody, nobody's uh, overweight. You know, we live in a culture where everything is somebody else's fault. If, if, if somebody is poor, well, it's the white man, or it's the colonialist, or it's capitalism, or it's whatever. You know, or it's a thyroid problem, or it's this, or it's that, or whatever. In other words, nobody wants to look in the mirror anymore and say to the person looking back at them, you are responsible 100% for what you are experiencing in your life right now. But that's what it takes. That's what it takes. Ain't nothing going to happen in your life until you can bring, I'm talking about positive. I mean, you go to prison without doing this, but I'm talking about positive. There, you know, you're going to have to bring yourself to the point where you take responsibility 100% for everything going on in your life. 100%. You can't bl blame the little woman at the house and you can't blame, you know, this president or the last president. Man, you just got to man up. You got to stand to attention. You got to look in the mirror and you got to accept responsibility for every circumstance and detail of where you are right now. That's the bad news. The good news is if you are 100% responsible for where you are right now, that means you can turn, you can change, you can make course corrections, you can do the small tweaks we talked about last year, and in five years or 10 years, you can be in a completely different situation. Amen. Shout it out loud. I'm responsible. I'm responsible. <laughs> I mean, we live in the, the, the daddy baby culture. Did you know that the vast majority of divorces are filed by women? And did you know that the vast majority of divorces filed by women cite a lack of productivity on the part of the husband? In other words, most divorces get filed not because of adultery, but because women get tired of supporting a lazy-ass husband. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, he said this wasn't church. <laughs> so... If women could fix this problem in men, they would have figured out how to do so long ago, but they can't. If you're sitting here right now and you don't love to go to work, if you don't thrive at work, if you don't think about work in your off time, only you can fix that in you. I remember when Austin had just barely gotten his driver's license and he was doing some part-time tech work at the church and you know, he told his mom he was going to work on a certain day, and she said, well, Austin, you know, it's New Year's Day. Nobody's open. I mean, a church isn't open. Nobody's down there. Well, he didn't believe her. He got in his car, drove over to the church. It was all locked. It was dark. Nobody was there. He drove back home. He was so disgusted. He said, why isn't anybody at work? And uh, after that conversation ended, I leaned over to Sue, and I said, he's going to be all right. Amen. Somebody wanting to go to work, he's going to be all right. Amen. So if women could fix this in men, they would have figured out how to, how to do it a long time back, but they can't. You literally just have to will yourself to do it. Vince Lombardi said, the difference between a successful person and others is not a lack of strength, not a lack of knowledge, but a lack of will. Jack Canfield wrote, you have to give up all your excuses. Tell your neighbor, you have to give up all your excuses. So as I said, you literally just have to will yourself to do it. And work has always been the will of God for man. God put Adam in the Garden of Eden to work it. Genesis 2.15 says the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. To work it and take care of it. Not just to work it, to work it and take care of it. Now, I, I have to bring a, a note of balance here because some guys just get all carried away with the work and they forget about the wife and the children. See, God wants you to be wise. God want, all, the word covers every scenario and situation. God wants you to be a, a shrewd enough cat to where you learn how to prosper, you learn how to hire, you learn how to train other people, so you're not the one having to do all the work 24-7, 365. Amen. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm not saying it's all about work. I'm saying work is where we get started. You get the ball rolling with work. I know it's hard to believe, but there was a time where I did everything. I did everything. I ran to Sam's to buy office supplies. I ran to, uh, you know, uh, I did everything. I did everything. I did everything. I don't, I don't. Now, you know what I do? I pray and I study. And I come down here and I do my thing. I got all these employees. I don't even ask anymore because when I ask how many we have, it can freak me out. And then I get to thinking about the payroll and the money and all of that. I don't ask any questions. I just pray. I study. I come down here. I do my thing. Now somebody else is going to Sam. Somebody else is going to Staples. Somebody else is doing all that. If you're here tonight and you're trying to be Superman... And do it all and make that big money. See, you can buy your wife some stuff and she can still be unhappy with you. Because she didn't marry the stuff, she married you, hopefully. Now, there may be men here tonight, she wanted the stuff. But (laughs) hopefully, hopefully she married you. You understand? So I'm not just saying work and that's it. No, we have to work smart. We have to learn Lessons about management and hiring and managing people and doing all that. Amen. And then and then believe God. You say, well, I don't have enough, I don't, I don't have enough business yet to expand. Well, believe God, believe God, believe God. The answer to everything, my brothers in the Lord, is have faith in God, have faith in God, have faith in God. Proverbs 10:4, lazy hands make a man poor. Oh my goodness. See how politically incorrect the Bible is? And that's why sometimes you bring a visitor. There could be a visitor right here tonight, and he's just royally P.O.'d because I use the word lazy. I use the King James word ass, and now I'm quoting the Bible talking about the lazy man. Well, this is a men's meeting. This is not a little boy's meeting. This is a meeting of men. And hopefully everybody here tonight knows what you are. (laughs) Proverbs 10, 4, lazy hands make a man poor, but diligent hands bring wealth. Say it out loud. Diligent hands hands bring wealth. wealth. Say it again. Diligent hands hands bring bring wealth. Proverbs 12, 24, diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in slave labor. Proverbs 13, 4, the sluggard craves and gets nothing, but the desires of the diligent are fully satisfied. Proverbs 21, 5, the plans of the diligent lead to profit as surely as haste leads to poverty. And then there's even a proverb that talks about taking care of your possessions. Proverbs 12, 27, the lazy man does not even roast his game, but the diligent man prizes his possessions. And this is why I've always said, take me outside and show me your car, and I'll prophesy your future. Well, pastor, I'm believing God for a new one. you got to take care of what you got while you're believing God for the new one. you got to take care, you got to wash and wax the used one while you're believing God for the new one. You have to show God. This is week of increase stuff. You have to show God that you are a good steward with what he has put in your hands right now if you're going to believe God that he's going to put more in your hands tomorrow. You see, the diligent man takes care of his possessions, but the lazy man does not take care of his possessions. So in the Bible, work is assumed. Work is first. God has commanded work. The apostle Paul was all over this. 2 Thessalonians 3.10, for even when we were with you, we gave you this command that if any would not work, neither should he eat. How many problems would that solve in these United States? If, if, if you didn't work, you didn't eat. 2 Thessalonians 3.12, now them that are such we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ that with quietness they work and eat their own bread. So the Bernie Sanders thing is not in the Bible at all. Not your neighbor's bread. Eat your own bread. 1 Thessalonians 4, 11 and 12, make it your ambition to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business. Tell your neighbor, mind your own business. Mind your own business. To mind your own business and to work with your hands, just as we told you, so that your daily life may win the respect of outsiders, so that you will not be dependent on anybody. And that is the vision at Faith Christian Center 
3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. And that is what I want for you. I want you to not be dependent on anybody. Amen. That's the vision here at Faith Christian Center. Amen. That you have enough and you not be dependent on anybody. 1 Timothy 5.8, If anyone does not provide for his immediate family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. 1 Timothy 5.8 is an amazing New Testament verse. It literally says that if a man does not provide for his own family, he is an infidel, he is lost, he is unsaved, and he is headed to hell. So in the Bible, work is assumed. Work is first. God has commanded work, and work is the will of God for man. Proverbs 14.23, all hard work brings a profit, but mere talk only leads to poverty. Proverbs 18.9, one who is slack in his work is brother to one who destroys. Proverbs 21.25, the sluggard's craving will be the death of him because his hands refuse to work. Proverbs 22.29, do you see a man skilled in his work? He will serve before kings. He will not serve before obscure men. Vince Lombardi said, leaders are not born, they are made. And they are made just like anything else through hard work. And that's the price we'll have to pay to achieve that goal or any goal. And he also said leaders are made and they are made by effort and hard work. You cannot live an excellent life without working and winning. And of course, working and winning go hand in hand. How can you win if you don't work? For if you do not work, how can you possibly win? Number three, you cannot win in this life without a commitment to excellence. You cannot win in this life without a commitment to excellence. Excellence. Talking about excellence. You simply cannot win in this life without a commitment to excellence. As a pastor, I can tell you that Christians who don't get much out of their faith in God are the ones <coughs> who are sloppy in their service to Christ. The Christians who do get a lot out of their faith in God are those who dare to give God their best effort, their best gift, and their best in every area of their walk, their talk, and their faith in God. Too many believers today are possessed by a spirit of mediocrity. This comes from being religiously brainwashed instead of being New Testament taught. Religion is forever telling people who they aren't, what they can't do, and what they ought not possess. But when we get into the New Testament, we find that this re religious language is not the language of the New Covenant. The New Covenant is forever telling us who we are, what we can do, and what we do possess. Amen. At Faith Christian Center, we have discovered that character, or the lack of it, is the primary limit or lid on the potential of God's people. It's true that we are saved by grace, yet many Christians stop right there, and they make no effort to improve their lot in this present life. It's true that we cannot earn our salvation, but on the other hand, we can earn a better life this side of heaven. The words we speak, the meditations of our heart, and the actions of our lives determine our health, our sense of peace and security, and our prosperity in this life. Each of us is called upon to individually determine our destiny for the next life. That's true. But what we need to also realize is that uh, we are all individually called upon to set our course in this life. And rather than set our course by popular ideas or by the traditions of men, we ought to go directly to the Word of God for our direction. I don't know about you, but I don't want what Elizabeth Warren says I ought to have. I don't want what Bernie San Sanders says I want to have, ought to have. I want what my Father God says I ought to have. In our ministry, we are constantly referring to the spirit of excellence. Excellence must be pursued. Excellence is not something that just happens. I mean, just look around. There's nothing in this building that looks like it's more than a year old. Why do we do that? Why do we touch things up? Why do we repair broken stuff? Why do we take stuff that's beyond its life expectancy and give it away and then buy new? Because we are possessed 
by the Spirit of the living God and the Lord Jesus Christ, and that is by a spirit of excellence. Our Father God is an excellent God, and our Lord Jesus is an excellent Savior, and the Holy Spirit that He sent to us is excellent in all of His ways. And so that's why we conduct ourselves the way we conduct ourselves. That's why we run St. Paul's the way we run St. Paul's. Excellence, 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 excellence. The whole world may be going to hell out here in a handbasket. Everywhere you turn, everything is awful. Customer service is awful. God <clears throat> help you if you have to call an 800 number. It's all terrible. But I had somebody come in the door they, I hadn't seen them in years and years and years, and they patted me on the back, and they said, Pat, they moved off to some other state or some other place, and they said, Pastor, we knew it, we knew it, we knew it. And I said, what did you know? We knew that we would come back, and it would be as it has been, and you would be teaching the Word of God, and it would be what it was. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We haven't fallen down. We're not going to fall down. Place not going to fall down. And we're not going to capitulate. We're not going to knuckle under. We're not going to bend over. We're not going to give in. We are holding the line here at Faith Christian Center. And part of the line we're holding is a commitment to excellence. Jack Canfield wrote that everything you experience today is the result of decisions you made in the past. Excellence is quality of character. This is what we mean by speaking of the spirit of excellence. The spirit of excellence is the ingredient that is able to carry an individual from circumstances of bondage into circumstances of abundance. In any given culture and under any given circumstances, the person who is moved along by a, a spirit of excellence will do better in life than the person who is content with mediocrity. I know some people wonder, you know, that, that we haven't, you know, gone gay and we're not dressing like we're running track and we're not, you know, we haven't buckled and knuckled under and all of that. But I know something that my compadres in the ministry do not know. It takes at least a hundred millennials to replace a baby boomer. So somebody comes in, you know, and they look at me like, and you know, I'm out of here. I'm doing exactly what the Republican Party doesn't do. I'm taking care of my base. Amen. The shepherd knows his sheep. Amen. 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 If I came in here Sunday, you know, with pink hair and had the foo-foo look, and I'd empty the place. <laughs> One Sunday, it'd be all over. 39 years of work, it'd be right out the window. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, he knows who he's preaching to. <laughs> what this means is that the outcome of our life is not determined by our external circumstances or by the environment that surrounds us. See, that's an excuse. On the contrary, the outcome of our life is determined by our attitude. The spirit of excellence is the ingredient that is able to carry an individual from circumstances of bondage into circumstances of abundance. Our outward circumstances are not the result of what life, God, or others have done to us. Our outward circumstances are the direct result of the spirit or the attitude that is on the inside of us. If you want a better life out there in your circumstances, you got to work on this man on the inside. Everything in life flows from the inside. Jesus taught this. That spirit, that attitude within us is going to come out and manifest itself through our outward circumstances. But many Christians don't want to change. They have no ambition to improve and could not possibly care less about setting and achieving goals in this present life. Many Christians speak and act as though God doesn't even care whether or not they win in this life. 
Listen, if there is no other reason to strive for excellence in this life, we should have motivation enough by having a desire to give Jesus Christ our very best effort in this life. That's what drove us all these years, to give God our best. I mean, he called me in that dorm room at Miami University in the summer of 1973, and I like the Southern Baptist phrase, I submitted to the call. But I thought to myself, if I'm going to give up my life, I'm going to, I'm going to run the gamut on this. I'm going to give God my best, and then I'm going to turn around and believe God for his best. After all that Jesus has done for us, how dare any of us offer unto him a sacrifice that is not befitting his sacrifice for us? The Father did not send his least. Jesus did not shrink back from giving his best for all of us. How dare any man or woman who calls him or herself by the name of Christ offer up to Jesus any effort short of the best? Jesus deserves our very best effort. Jesus deserves our very best attitude. Jesus deserves excellence on the part of his followers. Dare to give Jesus your best in this present life, and Jesus will make sure that you experience his best in this, your present life. You cannot win in this life without a commitment to excellence. You know, while we were getting ready in the back before we came out, I was doing something and I made a crack to Austin, you know, good enough for government work. You know, you can't live your life like that. I mean, that's, that's like a joke, a family joke, you know, good enough for government work. And, and, no, you can't live like that. No, 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 no. And, and you can't be a great employer on the job and then come to Faith Christian Center and volunteer for something and let us down and be late and not show up. No, that won't cut it. Because we serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. He is our Father, and He gave us eternal life. Hallelujah. And He opened up the windows of heaven, and He poured out more upon us than we're even able to contain. So we give them our best. Amen. But I've realized in the past decade or so something that I had really never come to terms with before, and that is this. If people won't work, they cannot win. If people won't work, if people won't work, not can't work, if people won't work, they cannot win. And if people won't work, they will never excel. They will never excel at anything in this life or the next. Vince Lombardi said perfection is not attainable. But if we chase perfection, we can catch excellence. And Vince Lombardi also said the spirit, the will to win, and the will to excel are the things that endure. And here's another Vince Lombardi quote, the quality of a person's life is in direct proportion to their commitment to excellence regardless of their chosen field of endeavor. And another quote by Vince Lombardi, football is like life, it requires perseverance, self-denial, hard work, sacrifice, dedication, and respect for authority. If Vince Lombardi said football requires perseverance, self-denial, hard work, sacrifice, dedication, and respect for authority, then how much more does living a life for Christ require perseverance, self-denial, hard work, sacrifice, dedication, and respect for authority. My brothers in the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus deserves our very best effort. Jesus deserves our very best attitude. Jesus deserves excellence on the part of his followers. Dare to give Jesus your best in this present life, and Jesus will make sure that you experience his best in this, your present life. A great key to the success of Gina Selingerfeld is that we always wanted to do our best for the Lord Jesus Christ. And little did we realize in the early days the power of what we were doing. As we always sought to give God our best, we realized along the way that in turn, God had made it his business to get his best to us. The secret was there all the time. It was there the whole time. 
Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given or added unto you as well. Vince Lombardi said, all right, mister, let me tell you what winning means. You're willing to go longer, work harder, give more than anyone else. Paul wrote in Galatians 5, 7, you were running a good race who cut in on you and kept you from obeying the truth. Number four, losing is a habit and winning is a habit. So develop the habit of winning instead of the habit of losing. Vince Lombardi said, once you learn to quit, it becomes a habit. What is a winning mentality? When you win long enough, you figure out what it takes to win and you come to expect winning. Vince Lombardi said, winning is a habit. Unfortunately, so is losing. And he also said, winning is a habit. Watch your thoughts, they become your beliefs. Watch your beliefs, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. And my brothers in Christ, I would add this, it's your character that determines your destiny. Years ago in a sermon series, I said it this way, it's up on the slide. Words determine the way you think. The way you think determines the way you feel. The way you feel determines the decisions you make. The decisions you make determine the actions you take. The actions you take determine the habits you create. The habits you create determine your character and your character determines your destiny. Now you may be one of those Christians who spiritualize everything and say that God and Jesus aren't into winning. Well, that's exactly the attitude that has allowed Satan to ruin America and take over the entire world with godless communism. I never thought I'd see the day when we had a communist political party in the United States. I never thought I'd see the day when communism was taught in every public school, in every public university, as the way to go. But here we are. Loser Christians, addicted to sloth and laziness, have lied to themselves and told themselves that winning doesn't matter, and that tithing doesn't matter, and that making money doesn't matter, all while they were doing Nothing. While they were busy doing nothing, Satan won the cultural war and the Antichrist is headed our way. Amazing. Simply amazing. Vince Lombardi said, if winning isn't everything, why do they keep score? 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 26, this winter Paul wrote, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? See, that's not PC today. Only one gets the prize. Run in such a way to get the prize. Tell the guy on the right, run in such a way to get the prize. Tell the guy on the left, run in such a way to get the prize. Everyone who goes, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training, strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like a man running aimlessly. I do not fight like a man beating the air. Vince Lombardi said, you don't win once in a while. You don't do things right once in a while. You do them right all the time. Winning is a habit. Last point number five, faith in God and faith in God's word is huge. But to have the winning mentality, you have to have faith in yourself that you can do it. Say it out loud, I can do it. I can do it. Faith in yourself that you can do it. Faith in God and faith in his word combined with a work ethic and hard work and faith in yourself that you can do it will carry you over the goal line. Vince Lombardi said life's battles don't always go to the stronger or the faster man, but sooner or later the man who wins is the man who thinks he can. Our great and gracious Heavenly Father is an excellent God. He is a God of excellence. Gentlemen, in that 880 relay race at Anderson High School outside of Cincinnati in 1971, I learned that the last leg, the fourth runner out of four, was the most important. And why was it the last runner who was the most important? Because they had to bring it home. Of course, I wasn't the fourth runner. I wasn't that good. But here at the end of the ages, at the consummation of the ages, as we see the coming of the approach of the Antichrist, 
I find myself one of the fourth runners in the race. And our job is not to quit or to punk out or to go lame or to make excuses. Our job is to bring this thing home for the Lord Jesus Christ before the coming, the parousia, the rapture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Gentlemen, we are living right now at the end of the age. The rapture of the church will soon happen and the antichrist will soon be revealed. And every human being on the planet will soon be made a slave of Satan and his Antichrist, the man of lawlessness. So gentlemen, I say this with all of my love. Gentlemen, you need to find another gear. And you can do it. You can apply your heart to wisdom and you can develop the winning mentality. My brothers in Christ, I say this evening what Henry James said, it's time to start living the life that you have always imagined. But as Jack Canfield has written, the only thing that will change your results is to change your behavior. But you can do it. You can take action now to build into your heart and to build into your life the winning mentality. You already have an advantage. Very, very, very few men have in the year 2022 because you are already a part of a faith church that also teaches success motivation. All that's left for you to do is to take action. Now listen, I see new faces, and I know Austin introduced me talking about some of those numbers, and some of those numbers are big. How much money this church has given away, and how much Sue and I have given away. Listen, I'm just a preacher, and you can do it. What one man can do, another man can do. Amen. Tell your neighbor, what one man can do, man can another, do. Man can do. another man can do. So find another gear. Get after it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And lift up your eyes from the east and from the, look to the east and the west and the north and the south. Lift up your eyes from where you are. Because God has got another level for you. Hallelujah. The one that I have served 61 years, the one that I have preached about 49 years, I'm telling you what, whatever you are able to imagine or dream or visualize or think of, he is bigger than that. And he can take you further and he can take you higher and he can take you a lot longer down the road than you could ever imagine or think for yourself. All that's left is for you to take action. You can do it. You can take action now to build into your heart and build into your life the winning mentality. Here's a quote from myself from the Father's Day Guys Night Out 2019, Dream Again. I said, I'm a winner, I'm a winner, I'm a winner. And I train winners and I promote winning and I develop winners and I birth winners. Connections are everything. And that, my friends, is why Satan will do everything in his power short of kidnapping you to get you out of this church. If you want to win in this life, if you want to become wealthy over time, if you want to build a successful business, if you want to raise successful, self-sufficient children, then your connection to me and to Austin and to Faith Christian Center should be a number one priority because connections are everything. There may be somebody down the road that is more genteel. There may be somebody down the road that's got a cooler check-in system for children's church. There may be somebody down the road that's got a cooler stage. But there's nobody, there's nobody, there's nobody that loves you more and will do anything more in his or her power to get you over to the other side than the man you're listening to right here tonight. Amen. I love you. 
and I will challenge you. You come tomorrow night, I'll challenge you. You come Sunday, I'll challenge you. I'll prod you. I'll poke you. I will not let you stay where you are because I am convinced that God has got a vision for your life that is greater, that is greater than your vision for your life. Shout it out loud, I can do it. it. Shout it out loud again, I can do it. it. So you've got to get connected and stay connected to the right thing, the winning spirit. You need to get connected and stay connected to the winning spirit. You find something that's winning and you stay with it. And that's right here. Shout it out loud five times, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Glory to God. 